And also, just let's clear up the elephant in the room here. I am wearing a onesie. It's Sunday. Fuck off. Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 19 of Couples Quarantine. And do you know what? It's, it's nearly over. The dream is nearly finished. I'm with my beautiful wife. Sorry, hello. I'm I'm distracted by the dog. I just watched open the cage of his uh, the cage, the door of his crate with his teeth. I'm just really impressed. This is what I've had to that. put up with now. The, the obsession <laughs> with the dog. The dog comes After, first. Oh, you know what? We should talk about the dog because a couple of quarantine listeners have heard us almost up while having an organised argument mm. about whether or not we should get a dog on more than one podcast. We got the dog, and who is liking it more and more than expected, well, and who's liking it less than expected? No, well, we mentioned it. <laughs> we mentioned it before in one of the episodes that you've turned into mad dog woman, but I don't, I don't think you could underplay how mad she's become with no, this but dog since thing. We've had Bertie. We've only had guest episodes. We haven't had just. No, us. yeah, we haven't been back yeah. for a while. This is the first time we've bonded. But since, okay, fine. If you want a bit more detail about the dog, we've had the dog three weeks. He's brilliant. He's cute. Um, he's basically law unto himself. He's very clever. I'm talking about the dog, not Chloe. And um, Chloe is now spending all the time with it, talking to it as if it understands everything, reasoning <laughs> with it, um, <laughs> c- c- cuddling it, cuddling it, stroking it. Um, I caught a lying bed face to face, like head first with it. No, no, he's not allowed in the bed. No, no, I'm in his bed. You're um, in his bed. I get in his bed with yeah. him. Yeah, she tucks him in every night like he's an elderly gentleman. <laughs> Right, tucks around the edges to make sure he's okay. Um, I mean, he's lovely. He's got terrible breath. No, but explain why he's teething. So he's currently got... He went from having, I don't even know how many teeth, let's just say for argument's sake, 13. No, that (laughs) that wouldn't work. 14. (laughs) He's got loads of teeth. No, now he's got like half that She's an expert on everything as well. No, he's got little holes. She's Milan, go, yeah. Yeah, little holes and gaps in his mouth. And we're giving him raw food. Yeah, which is really healthy. Yeah, which is good for a dog. And I just think he's just, you know... Yeah, maybe we just need to wait for his teeth to come through. And I, think I just think he's better. discovered as well on top of his cage that he's got a whole toy display. You can see him walking around the background. He's now like, it's like him shopping at Hamley's for his own collection Should of toys. Should we show him? No, 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 oh, don't show him. No, don't show him. Come here. Come here, Honest boy. to God, my life has been taken over with this. This poor dog as well. She carries it around as well. <laughs> he's, a, he's, so he's the size funny. of a house. Look, 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 oh. look, look, oh. look. And now she's gonna, he's going to bite her because she's mad. But anyway, so that's that happened. I'm finding it a bit stressful because he does something called resource guarding, which is, hello, mate, you're right? Yeah, Aww. I thought so. Resource guarding where he, he gets arsy when you go anywhere near his treats and food, but we're, we're training that out. But he's clever, he can sit and stay. And he's slightly, well, better trained than Chloe. But I mean, but what have you been doing Do you know, apart from the dog? Forget the dog. Can we just talk about the resource guarding really quickly? Yeah. Really interesting. So I wrote in a, first of all, weird that people read the comments under my photos. It really freaks me out. Right. But I, one of my old friends that I went to, uni with is a it's like a dog walker dog trainer Fit bloke or? james neither here nor well, there. it does it does because <laughs> i, I want to hear the story if it's a fit bloke we, you know we don't want to talk about it. if it's like an elderly out sort of outsized woman then yeah <laughs> then i want to hear all about the dog walking no, no, adventures no. <laughs> yeah no so anyway yeah um weirdly he went to go stay with um a couple of our friends and i think he must have tried to eat this other dog's food and the other dog obviously kind of gave him what for and then he came back and he started doing it because he never did it before. No. And so I mentioned this, and it was weird. I got two really kind of, you know, extreme responses. One person was like, why do you even need to go near him when he's eating food? Yeah. And I would completely agree with that. Why do we? But because there are loads of kids in my family, if James and I ever have a kid, the kid's going to need to... It, we're going to want to feel like it's okay if it toddles over to him. Yeah. No kids, no problem. But, you know. So that. And our kid will definitely be in the dog food bowl trying to eat the dog food. Yeah, our, dog will, our kid will probably try and eat the dog. Oh, yeah. So, so there's that. Um, And the second person was like, this is a really big problem and you need to fix it and fix it now. I don't know what this is, what they're thinking. He doesn't bite or do anything crazy like that. He just gets like growls and like goes a bit, you know, like like freezes over his food. So we're just trying to deal with it. It's fine. But I mean, if you stroke me when I'm eating, I get pissed off. Like very much like if I'm watching a movie and you climb all over me with a big hot body. And also just let's clear up the elephant in the room here. I am wearing a onesie. It's Sunday. Fuck off. Okay, and also, I hope wearing this onesie will encourage Chloe to wear a onesie and turn the heating down. But most of the time, I'm walking it, wearing it stripped off at the waist. I left I don't both of my onesies at mum and dad's house. Which is funny, because they have the house at the heat of the Sahara I know, Desert. I can't, and they deal can't with wear it. it there. I mean, we talked about it in one of the early episodes about heat, heat with couples. I mean, I reckon it's our biggest bugbear. There is a cold war going on over the thermostat in this house, and it's an unwritten thing. She turns it up, I walk past and turn it down, and we just do it all 
day long. It's like a really shit game of tennis that I nobody's think we watching. We talked about this in episode one. We did, one. but I'm just covering the fact that this is still happening. So this episode is out on Monday the 14th. The next episode is out on Monday the 21st. So that will be the Christmas episode where we're going to drink. So we encourage <laughs> all of you to buy alcohol and drink with us for that episode. Yeah, and we've got obviously, because we've had so many wicked guests, and thank you so much to all the... This dog is unbelievable. It's now found a rattle attached to a snake. Where does it even get this shit from? Anyway, thank you so much for who send your questions in to seekingquestions at jameshaskell.org. Just one point of admin. Look, I know there's a big backstory to it, but can you keep the stories short and concise? Because there's a few, like three pages in there. And while I really love what you lot have got to say, I have a limited attention span and old busy boots over here. Well, I'm trying to ask what the fuck you've been doing, but you just keep talking about the dog. I just did a one-hour live for my... Oh, sorry, I know, I understand. Oh, you're giving me an opportunity to promote. <laughs> you're so... My, no, it was lovely. Fine, fine, Thank fine. Thank you. Fine. My fourth book, Eating for Results, is out on December 31st, available for Amazon on pre-order now. Um, and so every Sunday I'm doing a live cook-along where I know something goes a little bit awry every Sunday, which is kind of lost, kind of um, anxiety attack kind of conundrum for me but um it's great fun so i've just done that for an hour okay anyway i'll go to the first question while she's dealing with this so please keep me anonymous yes everybody on this podcast is anonymous except me and chloe and yes we have joined only fans but it's not for what you're thinking well you probably are gonna... i will we had sam james, Dowler that's on. Not, james will get naked for cash fact i had we had sam Dowler on and he met that guy in america who was getting paid a hundred thousand pounds for sticking things up his ass Ooh. £100,000 a month for things like your bum. I, I mean, I have considered it long and hard. Like, if you see me in the corner in like different poses, a bit like Pablo Escobar, like on a swing, in the thing, staring out the window pensively, How I'm thinking about it. How many are there to be getting paid a consistent hundred grand a month and stick up your bum? I mean, surely you run out of things. No, I mean, there it sounds like a challenge in itself, which I'm not going to involve myself in. The first things that come to mind for me are like, you know, produce and fruit. Oh, obviously, and you've got the whole vegetable section. Then obviously sex toys. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. And things like remote, hair mobile brushes, phones, batteries. Don't, yeah, but not um, a hair straighteners on because you'll never do anything again after that. Um, Thank you, James. I'm sure our listeners may used to know that. I was recently introduced to your podcast, and I must say I'm absolutely loving it. I've caught right up in just a few weeks. It's insane how much I can relate. You both make me feel like I'm actually normal and not batshit crazy. We're not a great level of whether you're normal or not. Our friends think that we're the worst couple in the world. Yeah, we do. But anyway, bear with me. There's a question here. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Episode three with Emma was rather interesting. When I first met my partner, they told me they had a pawn shop for casual sex and had previously attended sex parties. After trying to play it down... Me being super nosy, I've got a bit of a cold, sorry. I did my research. Unfortunately for me, I was a little taken aback at what I had found. It's safe to say the places they had visited were no killing kittens parties, that's for sure. I want to, fo- I want to f- say, first and foremost, I'm not in any way a prude, and we have a great sex life. My question is this. I'm absolutely not into wild sex parties and made this clear from the very beginning. My partner really assured me that it's not something they were addicted to or wanted to pursue when in a relationship. So do you think it's something that one, one could just give up? I fear that in the long run, I may not be enough and I've often thought that my partner might miss this or in some way need this. What do you think? Well, well you go first. So, look, I think fetishes are quite transitory uh, or can be, but they can also be deep-seated. I think, look... It's great that you're exploring it. I think um, it's obviously really good to have the conversation about it and not let it pretend it's not happening. There are obviously varying degrees of sex parties. There are varying degrees of activity and nobody should ever be pressured into something that they don't want to get involved in. Mm. Equally, you need to be open-minded because there are different stages and different levels. A lot of people go to Killing Kittens, for example, and just watch from the wings. Boyerism. Boyerism. And part of the excitement is to go there. Some people go to... In a way, that's when you actually have sex with your partner in front of everybody. No, boyerism is watching. Um, I don't know what I don't I don't know what the other ones they don't, there's a term for it. Cuckolding is where you watch your wife get banned by someone. Um, but <laughs> I don't know why I know that. It's actually a Shakespeare thing. I think it's uh, Hamlet or yeah, Hamlet is. Um, oh my best. No, Hamlet, Hamlet, Hamlet. So anyway, I basically think yeah, it's it's not a problem to to go there. But I I just think you, there are varying degrees. It's important to have a conversation with your partner. But yeah, some things don't die. But what I would always say is put that sexual energy into your partner. So if, unless it's something super niche that you probably should have flagged up to start with when, when you were in that relationship, um, you know, I don't know what that would be, but like a bloke like sleeping with men, something you're not going to ever be able to fulfill. There are ways and means of putting, you know, putting things together so you can enjoy yourself. And I think that, for example, Killing Kittens is a great 
segue into it. Some couples go out there and just have sex themselves and the thrill of being watched by other people. Yes, there are some more professional ones like um, Torture Guard and, and then... You know, Torture Garden's even meant to be tame in comparison to some of them. But there's different rooms, isn't there? I yeah. Think. Yeah. And then and then and then you can extend onto something else. But I, look, I think you're doing. I think you're great, and I think it is possible to get over things. But I think you've got to be honest. And the last thing you want to do is that person hiding those fetishes. Yeah, I second what James said. I think um, it's really the most amazing thing about this is that you've had the conversation and that he's been really honest with you. It's amazing how many men not only lie about you know present. I don't mean to. I sorry. I, I should. I should have said. In my experience, it's amazing how many of my partners have not only lied to me about what was happening in the present, but what happened in the past. And the latter, I find very odd because why would you lie about something that happened in the past? Um, unless you know you are with a prude, which I'm not, and this girl says well, you're she's definitely about judgment, not. Maybe. Yeah. But I just think that's one of the wonderful things about starting a relationship is that you tell each other everything that happened before you met and then you have a better understanding of each other. You probably have a better sex life. Um, I think that's brilliant and, and serves you well. There's a big difference between um, enjoying casual sex and attending sex parties and being addicted to them or it being a fetish. Don't get me wrong, the two will obviously go hand in hand, but one doesn't necessarily equal the other. So I would bear that in mind when you say, you know, he's assured me he's not addicted to them. Um, or wanted to pursue them when in a relationship. Again, some men really like doing that when they're single and when they are in a relationship, they're much more monogamous or I should kind of say domesticated in a way some men would would probably love both um but this is when it comes down to you and if you're saying you're not into it then that's the end of that and if it turns out that in the long run he can't handle that you will find out trust me as someone who's found out every single time they've been cheated on within a matter of days uh you will find out and and i guess it'll be it'll be over for you but i don't think this is something that because of his past you should walk away from now and that would be my answer. I'd say give it a go. Give him the benefit of the doubt. As you said, James obviously had, a, you know, a lot of sex before me. And it, I'm, honestly... People like me in the onesie with the beard and the disheveled hair. You're very sexy. Honestly, and I hate saying this because it always ends up as some stupid Daily Mail online headline. Mm. It has done nothing but serve me well. We have a great sex life and I'm fine with it. The, the way I draw the line is, you know, I don't want an open relationship. And you know that and I know that and that's the end of that. I think so, as well, we've said it before, Chloe reads or has read a fantastic sex therapist called um, Esther Perel, who took, well, relationship therapist. Just three books and they're three all amazing. And she, yeah, and she basically, I, you know, when Chloe sort of talks at me, I, I kind of walk past and part of my brain's listening to part of my thinking, oh, what songs can I mix later? Oh, look, there's a seagull or something along those lines. Um, but one of the things she did say was that Esther Perel says with, with couples who cheat or couples who do everything else, if that man, for example, because women do cheat, but the man in this particular case, had put that much energy into his missus, so i.e. trying to create the fancy, having covert conversations, going to visit people, making someone dress up, if he'd made his missus do that or put the energy into that, then... He would have been just as fulfilled... And it wouldn't have happened. But I just also just want to add to that, that she often says, uh, the number one question I get asked is, how could I have prevented this from happening? How can I prevent it from happening in my relationship, either for a first time or a second time or whatever? And she says, well, you can't. That's the first thing, you can't. The only thing I would say, and then she says that, if you put that amount of energy and effort into your sex life, that's the best thing to do is to redirect it into your sex life. Look, we're not stupid. Everybody knows there's a thrill that comes with having an affair, you know, having a secret there's also um, a sense of independence that you don't necessarily get in a relationship where you feel like, you know, you're your own person again and you have that freedom again. Um, and it's really psychologically kind of textbook. Um, but it's, you know, everybody should be probably putting some work in to focusing that kind of energy, sexual and excitement into their marriage. Like, what can you do? That great, is at Christmas time, that great film with Vince Vaughn and um, Reese Witherspoon. Uh, for Christmases and the whole film starts with them role playing in a bar and it's really sexy and they're, they're in a real relationship um, and it's fucking fantastic and I recommend that all couples do that James and I have done versions of it although not that kind of extreme I mean I would have got a C at GCSE drama for my acting you I don't think you would have scored but you know I was quite pleased with how I did I got an A at GCSE drama mm. just saying oh, alright well you didn't that night um, okay. <laughs> my brother got an A at GCC drama as well and he, his play was called Are You Ready for GCC yeah. Drama? Yeah. Hollyoaks at school. It was called X Stacy and it was about this DJ whose ex was called Stacy and she overdosed away. Ah, but what it was was good, educational, wholesome and entertaining. <laughs> I'm so 
<laughs> and what was the moral of the story? Is don't do don't do drugs this is what or he buy had. decent drugs. He was the, the DJ and he wore a, oh, <laughs> he wore a Hawaiian shirt oh, and cap no. and he had sun in his. Oh head. God! And this is this is not Jack Whitehall, the fake brother. This is actual Jack, the actual brother. There are actually some really famous actors who were in that play mm. with him at the time. Just I love for the it. record. Oh. Do you want to read the next question? Yeah, I'm just really happy. What was the upshot? Don't do drugs or buy good drugs? Yeah, yeah. No, obviously it was Jesus C. Drama. The whole story was like, don't do drugs. Well, do you remember that in in, uh, (laughs) in, um, Love Actually where he goes, kid, he goes, don't pay for drugs, become a rock star and they (laughs) They give give you you for free. It's so good. He's unbelievable. Bill Nye, is it Bill Nye? Bill Nye, yeah. yeah. Oh, apparently he's dating Anna Wintour. It's in Devil Wears Prada edition. I don't know why I know that. I've really let myself down. Everyone should know that's culture, isn't it? I'm wearing a onesie on a Sunday. And you're... It's like the only culture American American fashion industry has, and it's British. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. There's obviously lots of culture there. Okay. Don't know, but I'm out of my depth on fashion. Question. <laughs> I see what you did there, and I appreciate it. I want to say your name so I can tell you how much I appreciate it, but um, I don't know if you want this to be anonymous. It's all, everything's anonymous here. Do you, do you get it? Yeah. <laughs> Hand up. I'm seeing this lovely woman. She's actually really lovely. I've been seeing her since COVID ruined everyone's life <laughs> in it. I have my own home. And when I first started seeing her, we had amazing evenings together, talking all night long. And just as you'd expect, lots of passion. But I'd always suggest that she went home at the end of the night to save her thinking that this was her house as well. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, this, this goes on to be better, like but it, anyone yeah. listening. Mm-hmm. Professional though. I like, you've got to admire that. It's like, yeah, listen, don't get too comfortable, love. I'll do a job, but you're not staying. I mean, I don't know about that. If you're going to have sex with them, you should wow. have them sleep in the bed. Uh, but yeah, but it depends. At the moment, we talked about the post come hatred. Maybe I mean, I wouldn't it. sleep in a random bed all night, apart from that one time I had sex with you. <laughs> so one evening I thought, bugger it, we both deserve a, I don't know what kutch is, but okay. A, 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 a kutch. Oh. Kutch is a cuddle in Welsh. Oh, oh Welsh people say it. I don't know, but it, it definitely means that. <laughs> well, we know that you got your dick wet in Wales. <laughs> She'll really love to stay. Under the <laughs> <laughs> What was the thing she was looking? What was the Welsh thing? Kutch. Oh, I love English. Oh, I fucking <laughs> love English cock. Do you? You mean you love my English cock? No, no, I just love English cock. Um, okay, so she'll she'd really love to stay over, and I think it will show her that I'm getting more into us brackets commitment. But I didn't. Sleep. In case, in case you didn't know what us meant, we're not, we're not idiots. But I didn't sleep a wink all night. The noise from her mouth—it was like sleeping next to an elephant shagging a warthog. The morning after, she admitting she admitted to having a little snoring issue. She kept that fucking quiet. I can literally sleep, sleep through an atomic bomb going off, but I did not sleep a wink all night. I even had to creep out of the room and go and sleep in a spare room for a few hours, but I could hear her through the fucking wall. I've been living by myself for two years. I have a huge king size bed and I love my sleep. Here, here. I have an intense job and I get eight hours and getting eight hours a night is essential. I really struggle without it. I now lie I'm now lying to her and telling her that I'm working away because I can't bring myself to sleep next to her again. She's amazing, beautiful, successful, but fuck me, the snore. I do appreciate my own time. I've bought a warp bike, decorated the house, bought loads of free weights for the garage, so I'm really into my own space. I really find it hard to approach her about this as I don't want to upset her. I've tried ending it, but she says she can really see us together in the future. She's I'm, got crystal balls. <laughs> I'm living a lie. What do I do? I don't want to upset her, but I don't want one more night of torture. I love how, I, I do understand this is a difficult situation, but I love how it's like, I'm living a lie. <laughs> It's like, it's not that big a lie, mate. You fancy the bird, she's a terrible snorer. It's not like, secretly by day, I'm a woman using my what bike in my fully dressed up house and my weights. I'm normal, but I lack my own time. You sound like Patrick Bateman. <laughs> I can do a thousand crunches. Hello, this is Patrick Bateman. <laughs> um, okay, so go on. What's your, what's your well, I mean... <sighs> James doesn't know because while well, he's keeping me up, <laughs> snoring the night away, he cannot relate to this problem. <laughs> I can because my father, I, mean, I haven't spent many times in bed with my father, or have I? That maybe explains a lot of what's going on. Um, <laughs> That's just a transitory. Yeah. You can grow out of them. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. <laughs> um, no, basically, he's a terrible snorer. Like, I'm telling you, nuclear snorer. So, a couple of times we've gone on business trips, or it sounds really weird, like but the start of a confession, but no, we've, we've done like business trips when we're younger on holiday and end up sharing a room. Loads and, of kids share a bed with their I, parents. I, I didn't share a bed, weird. I shared a room. Right, that's neither a weird. No, I know it's neither a weird. I'm not, yeah, I mean, but let's not be too weird about it. <laughs> I feel like I'm overcompensating. <laughs> no, I'm basically. <laughs> <laughs> 
No. Uh, anyway, so basically, he's a terrible snorer. So I have... Wait, look at me later. I'm not confessing to some weird thing for Dad. This has got out of hand. I'm like, I made a joke. And Do you know what have you noticed worse. just before we move on and we actually answer this yeah, whole question? Yeah. Is that, have you noticed that Americans find incest like a point of humour? Like in Friends, in yeah. loads of rom-coms, it's like a funny joke. Yeah. And like Brits, myself yeah, included, yeah. find it like, like yeah. stomach stomach churning. churning. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, I just always wanted to make the point. Anyway, let's move on. So, so no, he's a terrible snorer, so I do not have experience here. I am a, apparently a terrible snorer. I have spent a lot of time sharing rooms with fellow teammates. And what, one of them, his name's Hilly, when we were on Under 19s. And... Um, he used to um, have to go like this, and I would yeah. roll over apparently and stop snoring. And yeah. it was his way of dealing with me. Apparently, if I made a noise, I'd go over. I obviously always sleep on my back, so I'm fully aware I'm snoring. I have Googled how to deal with snoring because I know that I'm keeping you awake, and you're pretty like <laughs> Chloe come wakes up in the morning, going, How have you slept? She's like, I'm fine. And she looks like she's been disheveled. She's got like, bloodshot eyes. She's like, I did, I did sleep. I genuinely, I'll get on to my answer, but go on. But I, well, I genuinely think I'm aging faster by like Since sleeping barring next me. to you. Yeah, yeah, like no, just sleeping next to you. Like it's insane how loud you snore. But carry on. So I, I basically looked at these breathe strips. There's a little ring you put in your nose like a bull. Um, so I'm aware of it. I do. And when Chloe says that, I'll do roll my side. My side, but not being able to get to sleep because somebody else is snoring is really frustrating. I have shared room with teammates and lads who have snored all the way through their careers. It is horrific. I've tried earplugs. Um, I've tried the, like you're doing to a horse and it works on some people, doesn't work on others. Um, but yeah, there isn't an easy way of getting around it. But I, but I did, so I keep saying, but, but Mike Tyndall, who is like a day snorer, he's like Darth Vader. He's like, no, no, he got his nose fixed. No, he's even worse now the podcast. He's like, it's, it's terrible. I recommended the old breathing strips to him and yeah. the old the bull's nose oh, ring, and it does work. I remember that. Yeah, because they're yeah, and and it did work for him. He reckons it did. I haven't had any feedback since. They're still together, so that is obviously a good sign. Having but another baby. They are having another baby. Congratulations, the Tyndall. Yeah, massive um, congrats. And they're amazing parents. Did did? But I mean, does it work? I mean, well, I mean your view. Yes. Yeah, so it, okay. So right, my answer to the question, and then do the nose strips and the rings work? Um, so, uh <clears throat> I've broken up with a boyfriend before, not James, obviously. <laughs> We're married. Um, because he just didn't care about sleep. He liked to stay up late drinking, partying, having fun. And he liked to get up early in the morning and go work out. God knows how he did both of that. Those things, sorry. And at the time, I had a really intense job, both like physically and mentally. And um, and I just, I just couldn't. And I actually, I managed to be with him for like a couple months and I really liked him. And everything was great, but I just couldn't do it. I was really losing sleep. And so I do understand people might be like, oh, this is a bit dramatic. But it just was the end of the relationship for me. I was like, if you can't respect like the fact that I want eight hours of sleep and I, I can't be with you. And obviously then you get tired, ratty, pissed off, and I was done. Um, so I do totally understand that it really can be a problem in a relationship. And to be honest, I think if it's enough of a problem that it's making you want to leave and not be with her, then maybe she's, she's not. The, she's not what you, you're going to be with like long term. She's not the right person for you. Because James snores like a fucking <laughs> fuck when I'm not kidding. He falls asleep before me. Like his head hits the pillow, gone. Yeah. Right, absolutely Hence gone. why I don't do a lot of drilling at night, as explained. <laughs> no, never. Podcast. And in a few seconds, like I can count on my fingers when he's going to start snoring. And when he starts, it's not like a cute little snore that might keep somebody a little bit, you know, a like little a bit wet up all night. No, no, it is like... Uh, uh, unavoidable I've put like um, temper pillows over my head I moulded them into my ears the whole thing like, it just it's un unescapable you haven't, it, tried, you haven't tried um, earplugs have you? Um, once I tried earplugs I don't like sleeping with them and I found that in the middle of the night I started scratching my ear pushing them in further and then I woke up and pulled it out so I'm just a bit like... You've gone all the way into your brain and you've yeah. never been the same yeah. since. Yeah. Um, so I do get it. Um, but why... So why did I stay with him and why do I not sleep in a spare room now? Because I love him. I don't... This is... Peop, a lot of people are going to roll their eyes at this. I don't want to sleep in a separate bed to my husband every night, regardless of how impractical it is because of his snoring. Like I want to sleep in the same bed as my husband. So I just kind of try and get on with it. And it's because I love him and he's my husband and I personally think we're meant to be together. So I think maybe she's maybe you just don't like her enough for as much as you thought you might, and that's that. 
However, I what I don't like is that you're not being honest with her. I think you just need to say to her, you saw really fucking loudly. It's keeping me up all night. I like my space. I like my sleep. It's kind of a problem for me. Try these things. They do work for James. So it's a strip and also like, it's like a little plastic ring that goes into your nose. Oh, fit before bed. <laughs> yeah. I actually um, really like the smell of the, pla- the, the ring. It's like, um, shut up, don't make a joke. And right. it's, the thing is, is that it doesn't solve it. Um, completely yeah but it's much better like there are long stretches of the night where he doesn't snore which means i've got the opportunity to go into my deep wave sleep actually sleep and then i'm okay if he snores i'll sleep through the night so it just gives you an opportunity so so i would talk to her about it explain why it's so important to you get her to try something there's also sleep clinics she can go to if it's that problem if it's that much of a problem it's going to be a problem for the rest of her life she should go to a sleep clinic and get it sorted out also right with all due respect chief you've sort of like she's got a problem and you've gone fuck it if she doesn't sort it out I mean, I looked into this because Chloe was being polite about it, and I knew I know I've always snored, and I assumed that I yeah, she in the jungle, she, she would and, and you got you you were the king of the jungle, whatever you are, and you let Jack come and sleep in the in the treehouse yeah. with you, and she didn't get a wink of sleep all night, and the, her on camera all night was just her staring at you and you snoring, yeah, and I felt so sorry for her. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know I was. I mean, did they play me snoring in, in yeah, the thing? Yeah, yeah, all right, fine. Perfect. Well, I nationally know she's a massive you. snorer. But the thing is, is that I looked into it. I came back and I just Googled a few bits. But that's as far as I've got. So the breathe strips and the thing were recommended. There's loads of stuff. I mean, I don't think... There, are, there is some like apparatus that you can fit to your head. I'm drawing the line at that. And I imagine that if you wanted to sleep next to you, you don't want it to fit some sort of But it can also contraption. be a sign of... Um... What's sleep it apnea. Sleep apnea, which is actually dangerous. Yeah. So going to a sleep clinic if you're a really bad snorer is a really fucking smart thing to do because you're symptomatic of something that can kill you. So you should probably go to a sleep and clinic. And someone did actually tell me this, and this is again like a, not an old wives' tale, but it's completely unresearched, that if you're snoring, it's like a sign of, of your inability to, you're not necessarily recovering, sleeping properly, your breathing's interrupted, and actually you're not getting the full benefit and that by, by fixing it or looking into it it might help you so i mean maybe this is smart me to go and do something else if there's any snore or sleep experts on here and know anything about it want to send me some gear to help chloe get some better sleep i'll happily take gear isn't gonna help (laughs) (laughs) you won't be asleep so it won't matter um i think if you want to send me some equipment or i'll take part in a study um let me know (laughs) i'll take part in the study for free help yeah right next question Okay, how do you manage to find something on TV? Do you, when you're satisfied with that answer? Yeah. I mean, we're giving advice. Essentially, mate, you've got to just breach it with her, broach it with her, speak to her, uh, see if you can fix it. If you can't, move on. <laughs> how, uh, next question. How do you manage to find something on TV that you both want to watch? My missus watches absolute trash on TV and gets scared by anything remotely jumpy or violent, which pretty much rules out all of Netflix. <laughs> what do you guys watch these days? No, well, some say the last dance, and then I was like, well, that's jumpy too. But um, Oh, <laughs> crap off. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? Look, we, we do battle a little bit. However, we do get into universal TV series. So we did Game of Thrones. Chloe tried to sell it to me because she really wants to watch it. She's like, come on, James. It's got loads of tits. It's got loads of tits in it and death. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I better quickly rush and through. It was a lot of tits and death. James is like on his phone. It's weird. He like, he's got a sixth sense when tits are on the screen. So he'll be on his phone, on his phone, on his phone. And then all of a sudden, just at the right moment, boobs, he'll look up. I'm yeah. like, for I'm not like that, just checking in on the plot. Tits, nipples, excellent. (laughs) Still going along. Um, What actually happened? Well, there's a good pair of them. Some were fake, some were uh, natural. There's no fake boobs in Game of Thrones. Fans would go mad. Well, you say that they could have been really good ones. Really good ones. It takes an expert touch. I mean, I I suggest... I've only ever seen two in my life pairs of really good fakes. One of them on Lindsay Lohan. Apparently she has fakes. I don't know. I don't know either. Well, one actually, of our one of my old teammates would know, but I'm not going to mention it on this. No. Um, and uh, oh, one of our friends I won't mention. I, although I, I'm sure she won't care. I know he's snoring. The dog's snoring. Dog snoring. Um, yeah. ha- has fake boobs that I've just never seen a pair of boobs look so real in my life. I don't believe you. Could you show me a photo of them? I'll not judge. I think she's shown you them. Has she? Yeah, I think she has. Oh, I don't think she has. But anyway, um, I. Why are we talking about tits? Oh, TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. So basically. Uh, <laughs> 
we've actually the situation where we, we've watched some great TV series together and absolutely loved it. We're what, currently watching The Undoing with um, Nicole, Kidman. Nicole Kidman and Grant. and Hugh Grant, which is unbelievable. We've done Game of Thrones. Um, what else? Are the, the Big Little Lies. We, you know, we've done both series of them. Um, we did White Chapel together, which is a bit niche. Last but that, Dance. Yeah. All the non-violent ones, other than like kind of like serial killer documentaries, tend to be documentaries. Yeah, Hernand, you know, Aaron Hernandez, the mind of Aaron Hernandez we watch. But recently, what we do is, is that we find an actor we like. So Denzel Washington. So I tested the water with Equalizer, and Chloe loved it. I love everything that man is in. I love yeah. that man. I mean, I just, I just, he I'm, is, I'm uh, in love with him. Yeah, he is amazing. And so we watched the Equalizer, then we got the Equalizer 2. And then we, what we did is we went and watched all of Denzel Washington's movies. And do you know who we found the other day? Harrison Ford. So I put on a Harrison Ford movie. Now, Harrison Ford, other than Indiana Jones, obviously, obviously, I'm... And Star Wars, obviously. Obviously. I'm not really a huge fan of, but I was very pleasantly surprised by some Yeah, so of we Indiana started Jones. with the four Indiana Jones movies, which have got a plot, not over amounts of violence. He, he looks dreamy. There's a sort of, you know, something going on there. And then we went to the, extended ourselves to the other Harrison Ford uh, movies. But what we do is the art of compromise is Chloe has wanted to watch a Christmas movie for a long time. And what she does is, when I'm not here, she just watches the same stuff on repeat all the time. No! Only Christmas films. Um, Sorry, but does everybody not watch Christmas films on repeat every December? Well, okay. Sure. Yeah, some do. But basically, she's made the house super Christmassy. I did nothing for it. She's done everything. Okay. And so last night, she cooked... I do a lot of things. <laughs> uh, and she, and she, she cooked Christmas dinner. Like, not a Christmas dinner, just a dinner. And she <laughs> wanted to put on White Christmas. And, um, and we watched White Christmas. And do you know what? It's a magical movie. When you've seen it 17 times... But actually, Bing Crosby Which is lovely. Which you haven't, lovely. because James said, and anyone who's seen White Christmas, you will not, you'll get this. James said halfway through, you know, I've never seen it from the beginning, yeah. and I never understood why he always Bob always. Uh, no, wait, hang on. What are they called? Phil, Phil, and Bob Davis. Uh, what? No, I was no. Saying, Warwick <laughs> Davis. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very different White Christmas. That. <laughs> um, uh, oh God, whatever. Yeah. You're like I never understood why he always touches his arm, and now I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now we get it. So, so we do. So that was it. So we, but we do we have to compromise. Relationship is about compromise. But so, but, but she also has to come to put the part on your side. It can't just be watch medium compromise. Sometimes you've got to watch some shit blow up, and that's and that's a fact. Yeah. I wouldn't go for full horror. Like if you've got like a real niche movie. So when she, Chloe's not around, I will just watch <laughs> James utter very shit. special movies. Very <laughs> special movies. Um, <laughs> Womb Raider. <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making this up. Um, <laughs> I'm making this up. <laughs> so you sound like such a me loser. Uh, Indiana Jones, the Temple of Poom. I've nicked that. <laughs> anyway, I don't watch all of them all the time because you want to wank once. You can't keep watching them because no plot. It's awful. So I then watch um, other things on, on TV and I watch the crappy trash stuff that I want to watch. Like when Chloe's away for the night, one of her special trips, I just watch like Terminator, the new Terminator movie that I'm not allowed to watch when she's here. Cause, oh, absolutely not. And she, that's what she does. This is Chloe, exactly. I go, Chloe. And she's like, what are you going to pick? And I like scroll over something like, I don't know, Terminator 17. And she's like, no, absolutely not. I'm like, oh. Okay. So that's what we do. But also, you do compromise for me a lot of the time. <laughs> so, since um, uh, Temple of Poon, I, I stopped listening to you and I've just been sat here trying to, to come up with names, Moon yeah. one, and I can't come up with anything. <laughs> <laughs> I did two, which just was shit. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 Equal. <laughs> oh, clearly, this is going to be terrible. Okay, think, let's yeah. just move on. Um, I <laughs> please can you come up with more? I really enjoyed okay, that. Right, okay. Um, I Harry Potter and the Prison of Azkaban. <laughs> <laughs> do you like that? I need to come up with one. I know you do. You do. Think of like I don't know. Harry Potter and the uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> and the Goblet of <laughs> No Flower. Just carry on. Now you tried your best. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> The Goblet of Boob. What a terrible, terrible movie. The Goblet of Boob. You're a fucking idiot. Um, okay, so what was my advice? Yeah, I agree with James. This is all about compromise. Sorry, but she's just going to have to stack up and watch something that you like and you're just going to have to double down and watch something that she likes and you take it in turns. That's what we do. 
And a lot of the time recently, we're actually getting pleasantly surprised. James missed out the pivotal part of the story where last night he said, oh, we should watch White Christmas. I've never seen it. I don't think that is. Oh. (laughs) No. He had his headphones on on the other sofa. He was doing DJ stuff. I was writing client plans and I decided, I know what I'll do while I write client plans. So I don't feel like it's a Saturday night and I'm in hell. I will put on a Christmas film in the background. Put on Christmas, put on White Christmas. James looked up remove one of his headphones and said, you know, I've never seen this from the beginning. I'd like to watch it tonight. And I was like, okay, so it's your choice. It was. It was, it was, it was. I'm not lying. And what did you say? It was magical and I loved Halfway it. Halfway through, know? but when we went to bed, you were like, um, it's a shame that they don't do musicals like this anymore. So you can just lie. I don't your think I you enjoy it. said you And, but yeah. it works both ways. Like he put on, what was the, the Harrison Ford film that I really liked the other day with Brad Pitt? Oh, um, the Irish one. Uh, I want to say clear. Uh, oh, no, I can't. About the, about the, two, the yeah. About the IRA. Sorry, I'm not sitting in And I was, um, I mean, Brad Pitt didn't have the situation. He didn't I'm not going to lie. But I uh, I was like, God, that was actually a really good film. And I didn't realise when he was like, it's about the IRA with Harrison Ford and Brad Pitt. I was like, this is going to be a crock of bad accent, shit, badly acted shit. And it was fucking great. Um, so sometimes we're pleasantly surprised and then we kind of get more of a feel of what we like to watch together. So it's actually a good learning exercise. So that's what I'd say. I'm still trying to think of those names. Me too. <laughs> I, I wonder if anybody We might have just sat the pot off and just write it. If anyone's listening, please share them. Please like send them in. What, I still think the Goblet of Boob. The Goblet like... of Boob. Oh. Uh-oh. We could just change it to Gobble My Boob. <laughs> gobble My Boob. Harry Potter and the Gobble My Boob. You're an absolute moron. Yeah. Right, Okay. Hi, Chloe and James. Thank you so much for the amazing content that is CQ. I mean, we don't even know if anyone listens to this. I wanted to read this. Why don't you read that? Because it's one of my old clients. Um, Hi, Chloe and James. Thank you so much for the amazing content that is CQ, the most down-to-earth and real thing coming out of the chaos that's been 2020. Thanks, babes. I mean, Boris Johnson's hair is pretty down-to-earth and real. (laughs) Very real. Okay, I listen every week while getting in my 10,000 steps per day. Big up to round two of the EC method in July. That's my coaching um, platform. And you have me laughing out loud through the new forest. Oh, I miss your photos. Anyway, I do actually now find myself in a situation where I would appreciate your advice. Earlier this year, pre-lockdown, I met a great guy. The relationship has flourished, surviving what is now two lockdowns, making a great effort to see each other and show our affection in creative ways when Boris says otherwise. I've never met anybody like him. He makes me feel like I'm the only woman in the world, secure, confident, and happy. How lovely. Um, However, there is one problem. Before the second lockdown and pre-tighter restrictions, my boyfriend suggested that he, myself, and his best friend get together for a meal. I thought this would be a great idea as I love a night out at the best of times, and I thought it would be amazing to meet the guy that he speaks so highly of as his best mate. I thought if we could all get get along, then this would just make our relationship even better. Well, I went along to the mill and it was horrific. (laughs) The best friend was horrible to me, making really insulting remarks about my skin. Acne is something that I've struggled with since my teens. And even openly saying to my boyfriend in front of me, comments which compared me to ex's previous girlfriends. Jesus Christ. Both on a physical level and on a performance level. I was absolutely mortified. What a dick. To rub salt in the wound, my boyfriend said and did nothing to stop these remarks. He wasn't encouraging them, but he didn't discourage them either. He just sat back and let them continue. They continued for the best part of two two hours until we got the bill and went home. My boyfriend and I don't live together. I felt sick. It was two hours of what I can only describe as relentless bullying. These comments just did not stop. Looking back, I'm not sure how I managed to sit through the entire meal, but I did. I do that all the time where you look back and you're like, how did I like do that good for you um it raised so many questions it's made me question everything i thought i had with this guy by not saying anything my boyfriend was complicit in these remarks how on earth does he regard this guy as a best mate i know for a fact that if it were the other way around and my friend had been making such comments then i would have nipped them in the bud right there and then do i ignore it or should it raise red flags about my boyfriend the day after the meal, I told my boyfriend how it made me feel, and he said that it was his mate's idea of ugh, fill in the uh, banter. Yep, ugh. I don't even need to say it, and that he was only, you know, joking, having a laugh, having a laugh. The thing is, nobody was laughing. I don't know what to make of all this, and I'd really appreciate any discussion that you guys can raise. Thank you so much, and keep up the amazing work, babe. I'm not going to say your name just because I don't know if you want me to, but I know don't exactly who no, you are. Say no, no, um, no names, because snitches get stitches. A few of my clients have written in, actually. Okay, so go on. 
Okay, this might shock some of you. I may have been that arsehole best friend. No, on you never occasions. would do that. Please no, tell not me never that, do that. Not that. <laughs> Fuck, I'm not like, I'm getting into a bird about, a, I mean, woman about her skin or... Uh, <laughs> Microphone check. You turn out of that comment. Um, we don't mind. I don't give a shit either remember. as a joke. Don't edit that out. Um, I love how I'm like talking to the mystery man, the producer. Please don't take that out. Adam. Um, Adam, producer. Um, basically, uh, I have been there and had conversations with men as if their partners weren't there. Not insulting them, but just sort of, you know, lowering the tone or being crass or being whatever. Okay, but hang on. I don't think there's anything wrong with you having a conversation with your best mate in front of his girlfriend, kind of like she's not there, as long as it's not negative about her. Oh, no, I've never done negative That's about... That's no, fine. I know, but, but it, that is it. I mean, look, I have never insulted someone's missus about them in front of them, but I've also just pretended that women aren't there and just said whatever, like, funny, Ugh. dirty sex stories or stupid, crass things that women might take offence to, but I've just been regards. I obviously learned the error of my ways and why no women like me and why no one of my friends' partners like me. You're nothing me. like that now. I know, I've, I've come Thank a long God. way. Years of therapy, electroshock, and look at me now. I'm fine. Um, so I've done that. T- taking the piss out your missus, really weird. It's almost like a territorial thing. I don't know yeah. what he was thinking he was doing. Um, and it's a bit like, I know it's hard to dress your friends down and it's easier almost to have an d- argument with your, your missus. But he's got to have stood up for her and said, you can't do that. I, I mean, the, the, ac- the acne comment alone, I'd be like, are you fucking serious? Like, you can't get into someone about their appearance. Mm. Like, you know, I mean, I, I don't even know how you get on to joking about your ex. Yeah. You know, if you said, oh, oh that's funny because, you know, so and you know, he, he did that with so and so. You know, I can understand that maybe, but. So, okay, just to answer her question, she what, she, what she's basically saying, what well, maybe we should double check what she's saying but she's saying what should i do about the guy situation turn it over there yeah i mean look ultimately did you know do i ignore it i mean i'll be honest with you no you shouldn't ignore that you've got to sit you know got to sit down have a conversation one mistake that i think women often make in these situations is that they try to separate you know a best friend from a best friend or try to get involved and vice versa, men forget to impress a women's friends because, you know, the first person they're going to go back to and talk about you to is them. And same with men. However, it's unacceptable that, you know, your, your best friend should be trying to make an effort with her, not insulting her. You know, you've got to 100% sit your, your, your partner down quietly when he's not, you know, under any stress and just say, listen, I was really hurt by his comments. You know, there's no way. And I, I think the best way to couch it, if I were you, is don't attack your partner and say, you didn't do this and this. Just say, look, I was really hurt by this. This is just totally out of order. He's insulted me. He's compared to me. He's made sexual references about me. Um, you know, I don't really know what to do about it. And I know that you think he's, you know, he's joking, but he wasn't. Like, I've never heard anyone do that. I've never heard anyone say that. And and, and, and judge your partner. You know, if he turns around and tries to defend it, but you know, you're clearly upset and doesn't take it on board, then maybe you ought to reconsider stuff. Um, because you know you can't yes men sometimes ego is a real thing and they don't want to seem to be weak in front of their friends and don't want to you know be honest with their friends but actually you know if you've been really hurt by it they've got to do something about it yeah well obviously the first thing i would say is this best friend is a total and utter douchebag (laughs) so i mean like i say it's one thing for him to tell us a sex story you know like james is saying that he used to do it's first of all it's rude enough pretending that a girl isn't there so let's just say that out loud. Yes, agreed. F- like, fuck off. That's. I wasn't pretending no, they no, weren't I, there. Wasn't... I was just pretending no, that they just I know weren't how, judgmental. I know. I mean, I'll touch on this in a minute, but I know what you used to be like. I've been told by numerous people. I know what you're like now. Um, but that's rude enough. So no. Second of all, to comment on your skin, absolutely unacceptable. I mean, to comment on any part of your appearance. I don't care if it's you're having a breakout, whatever it is. Absolutely not. Oh, yeah. I've got a couple of stories about this, actually. I just had a flashback. Um, and lastly, the fact that he just was complicit, which he was, and didn't say anything, you ask, is this a red flag? Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, but it says that he's a bit of a fucking pussy. So I've had situations with James where, and I I won't say who, but there's, there's, obviously there's a few people in my life who can be quite difficult, right? And James is obviously a big, outspoken, kind of peacocky, entertaining character, And there have definitely been moments where the people who are like, you know, quite get brushed up the wrong way very easily have like snapped at James. 
And I've turned around and been like, absolutely not unacceptable. Unacceptable. I'm, I'm the woman in the situation. And I'm like, I absolutely don't stand for it. This is this is my, my husband. And uh, you, no, like at, by default, I side with him. Um, unless it's, you know, my family, I always side with James. And even then, I, you know, it would be a problem. Um, <clears throat> so he should have absolutely said something to his best mate. And I don't mean to be gender shaming, but uh, a lot of people aren't going to like this, but especially as the fucking man in this situation, who's also, again, a lot of women and men are going to roll their eyes at this. Sorry, but but one of the lovely things about being with 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 your male partner is that you do feel a sense of protection, and he and he didn't protect well, you. Women want to be protect, felt, well, some, protected. Some some do and some don't. I specifically do, so I'm just speaking from my my point of view. We want to feel protected, and shame on him for not actually using the opportunity to do that. His friend sounds like a total dick, and I agree with James. Either he's being territorial of his friendship, or potentially, if there's an ex that's still in the picture in terms of the friendship group, maybe he was trying to put you off, and maybe he was trying to put them on a pedestal for, you mean, you don't know, and I, that's like a bit left of field, I know, but the motive is is very odd. I can't think of why he would do it, so I'm just reaching a bit. Ultimately, fuck this guy. Who cares about him? Your partner should have said something. I think you need to re-raise the subject with him. I think you need to say, it's not banter, it's not okay, it wasn't funny, it was awkward and uncomfortable, and I don't like it. Um, and then invite, people, the, then invite the best friend around and accidentally poison him, and then you've never got any... Some people do get a are territorial. It's not that you know what. Some people are a little bit psychotic, and they do like to get a kick out of making other people feel small. So there's been three people in my whole relationship with James who have made comments like this. I'll just note them. One of them was, "You work in fitness. You're not fit. You're fat." And this was actually at a time when I was shredded. <laughs> if they said it now, <laughs> probably agree. <laughs> but this was at a time when I had like real abs, and I kicked off. I, I was drunk, so <laughs> I did not, I could not sit, sit there and not do anything because um, my rationality had gone. Um, so there was that. And I actually really had abs at that time. I remember like, I had veins. I was pretty lean. And it was just, it, he didn't say it because it was true. He said it because he wanted to make me uncomfortable. He wanted to watch me react. Um, and it's a psychotic thing to do, but he did it. I've had another person, another guy um, say like, you need your roots done upon meeting me <laughs> which was just true again true right. but also not cool and then i've had um a female in james's life told me that it's not attractive when women lift weights um and so and i have for t- the latter two of those sat by and took it and i've had obviously other situations like that there's a big difference between those things and people who've said way like rugby boys who've said way worse to me that did make me laugh because it was jovial i hate the word banter so i'm not gonna use it but it was funny it was jokey it was fun this is not that I think, what would you do if we all went out and one of your friends started speaking to me like that in front of you? I know what you've, you've done this before. People have taken the piss out of my speech impediment in front of James and he's been like, what the fuck do you think you're doing? <laughs> and like, this is it. Like, this is what, that's what you want in a man. And every time he does it, I fall in love with him all over again. So I'm sorry, but you need to have words. Yes, I do. I'm like, a, imagine like a really sexy white knight just riding in on a powerful steed. Oh yeah, but, but so before James met me, all the wasps girls were like, oh, I'm so happy that he's finally got a girlfriend because he would just continu- continuously and constantly hound my boyfriend into breaking up with me. So he had like rugby players to be, to go on the piss with on socials who were single. I was like, James, you're a cock. I am a cock. What would you want me to read on this page here? Did you fancy? I like the first one. Okay, well, there's one of the first questions here. Is, <laughs> do you think anyone has actually spread Nutella or jam over their genitals and let a dog lick it off? No way. I think, I think we're reading a different first one. Oh, well, I mean, okay. If that's a genuine question, obviously they have. I mean, I don't know if it's specifically <laughs> Nutella, it's not but fun. obviously, <laughs> obviously. I mean, I don't know how you didn't think that was happening. I'm pretty sure you can Google that. Not that you'd ever want to do it. I'm not up to animal cruelty. Please don't do it. It's wrong and terrible and fucking weird. Um, but yes, people are definitely doing it. If you thought of it, someone's doing it. A hundred percent. That's a very good point. Um, anyway, that's not the one that I... Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, last question of the day. Last question. My new girlfriend backs herself as a great cook, but in fact, she's terrible. My parents are coming around, I'm guessing for Christmas, um, and she's insisting that she's going to cook for us all, mm. despite my best attempts to persuade her out of it, and let's just get a takeaway or something. Shall I just tell her straight that she can barely cook beans on toast without burning it? What do you advise? Oh, that is like hell. She must be aware she's shit. 
But it's obvious. But the, the trick with this is people will be like, oh, just tell her. It's obviously her way of showing that she cares. So if you tell her that, she's going to not only be really hurt in the moment, but you're also kind of like immediately giving her, like it's one of her languages of love, nowhere to go with it, which is horrible. Yeah, she's boxed in. <laughs> <laughs> Very much like her food should be in fucking thrown in, a, <laughs> thrown in the sea. Um, I look if you were gash at cooking, I don't know what we do. Um, I mean, I'd be way smaller. <laughs> I'd be like, help me, I can't breathe. Um, I look, I would just probably try and either say, listen, can we cook together? Can we do it together as a project? I'd love to cook with you. I tell you what, I promise not to argue and stress, and then like take the lead and like advise. And when she turns it up, turn it down. And else. but that could end in absolute kitchen nightmare. Offer to cook yourself, um, or pff, I don't know what the alternative is. Oh, well, first of all, I think it's brilliant that you just said like, "Oh no, we'll just get a takeaway or something." Like, take the pressure off. Um, so that's great. Um, if she's not having any of that, why don't you? Why don't you get tell your parents like, "Look, I really, you know, I love her." Or if you do, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I'm presuming that she's brilliant, but she's a really bad cook, and I don't want her to cook for you guys. Can you just call up? We're going to be in the car on Sunday, coming back from the pub at five p.m. And be like, oh, we, we found this great new pub near you. We want to try. We're going to take you guys out for dinner. And you can give your parents the cash trade off, whatever, but bank transfer. And then she doesn't have a choice. She's not going to argue with your mum and dad and be like, no, future parents in law, I want to cook. She'll be like, oh, okay, fine. And then nobody has to worry about it. Also, then you've, you've, you've kind of pre-warned them that she can't cook. So maybe next time, if, you know, they have to go along with it, they're prepared. And for Christmas, get her cooking lessons and do it with her. Yes. Great weekly date night. You learn how to cook. Yes. You get free food. Well, you're paying for the cooking lesson, but you know, you get free food with the cooking lesson. And also, you, and you're, you're paying for a lifetime of decent food. Yeah, and you're saying like, and this is your passion. I want to help you with it. And then she goes to, and then she, and then probably what? Say if you do a 12 week cooking course, she'll have 12 great meals. Imagine the first lesson when she goes to pour a pint of salt in and use a flamethrower to cook something. And the chef is like, no, what are you doing? It is not possible. <laughs> She's like, Oh, you I do thought... not put ketchup on this thing. <laughs> yes, I thought, um, would you mean that you microwaved everything for an hour? That's ridiculous. Or the last, failing that, if she, she can't be persuaded, when she served it all up, offer to carry it on the tray, just drop it all on the floor and have a table booked at a restaurant and go, I'm sorry. Oh my God, this is so bad. Anyway, should we go? Yeah, my dad did that the other night. He dropped Chinese food all over the floor. And then we got to order another one and I got to get some of the bits that I'd missed out of my first order. <laughs> <laughs> said the professional fatty. Um, listen, gang, that's what we've got time for uh, this listen, week on gang. Couples Quarantine. Um, quarantine. A quarantine. Uh, this what? is episode eight, uh, 19. We've got one more to go. I think of me and Chloe is like your friendly agony aunts. You know, not just about sex and deviance, about anything, any problems in life. We, you know, we're not qualified to talk about any of it. So you might as well send a lot of it our way. If you fancy doing that, please email cqquestions at jameshaskell.org. I get all of them. All the lovely complimentary ones that aren't questions are just being nice. Some of the weird ones. We haven't had any insults yet, so that's not, you know, not teeing up to be rude. Um, please share, subscribe, like this video, tell your friends. Um, we still haven't got a sponsor, but we're probably going to come back for Series 2, because uh, we've got nothing better to do. Um, I mean, have you got anything to say? Cool. Um, I'm still trying to think oh, of a... Gone. What about... Please write in, or, or do us a favour, on Instagram. So we've got um, Couples Quarantine Pod on Instagram, I think it is. Just search Couples Quarantine, it'll come up. Put your dirty film titles underneath, and, and we can see what we've missed out on. The undoing of my brow. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, you're just putting words next to words. You're a fucking idiot. You knew one. I did, I did. One I can't. More. Oh, a new one. Um... A Star Wars. Yeah. Return of the... No... Um, oh god right <laughs> we can't we're gonna leave it here thanks gang for everything gang. love you <laughs> just as you thought the pod had finished go on do it go on tell everyone return of the japs eye <laughs> <laughs>